Playground. I'm also the Vice President of the Business Council. Currently, uh, John Miller is running around taking care of some stuff, so I'm stepping in for him today. First thing, is uh, anyone here for the first time? All right, if you could introduce yourself and say a little bit about what you do. Excited to see you guys here. Uh, we work with several of you guys, so it's always good to see you guys participating in these, and uh, a lot of great businesses popping in here. And we hope to see you guys next month also. I'm sure we'll have a great program together. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Michelle Lane. Michelle is the Senior Director of Community Wellness and Corporate Health at North Kansas City Hospital. We're very proud to have North Kent City Hospital in our community, and they're one of the most faithful and supportive members of the Business Council, and we really appreciate that's important to the business community down here. Everything you guys do for us is wonderful. Thank you. Um, in addition to the normal functions we think that a hospital does, uh, North Kent City Hospital also has a very strong focus on occupational health, which is important to a lot of our businesses. We do construction, so it's important to keep everybody healthy. A lot of ergonomics in the workforce is very important in today's uh, companies to have a good, efficient working workforce. So thank you for those services. Michelle is a master's prepared nurse and a social worker, and you've spent over 25 years helping people lead happier, healthier lives. Now Michelle's gonna give you more details about herself and her work in a Michelle. Actually spent at work. There's 168 hours. 
hours in a week. And if you spend 56 of those sleeping, which would be eight hours a day sleeping, and you spend 40 of those at work, you're not left with much. And so if you think about it, this balance between work and life is just really bullshit. It's not gonna happen, people. So because you're not gonna go to work and leave work at work, and you're not gonna have just your home at home. And so happy, healthy work environments embrace the fact that there is melding between those two worlds. So we're gonna discuss that a little bit today. So unwellness, this is expensive, okay? This data came from the CDC. Chronic diseases cost us about $1,100 billion a year. $1,100 billion. And chronic diseases are typically things that are controllable. Obesity, high blood pressure, cardiac disease, these are all things that can be managed with good choices. $250 billion is spent on workplace illness and workplace injury. $300 billion is spent on workplace stress. And so the interesting piece about workplace stress is the CDC is really focusing on this. This is a data point that has increased over the last five years astronomically. The cost of stress in the workplace is huge. And then lastly, the cost of disengagement at work is about $550 billion. So there's a business case behind this, right? So we know the businesses that do this right. Google, you know, they've got ping pong tables and sleep pods all over the workplace. Zappos, they have recess every day, okay? Server, they give a, a sabbatical leave, a paid leave for their employees. People that do healthy work environments right attract people and retain people. We talk about it, we're like, oh yeah, you get to work from home in that place, right? They've got dry cleaning at their location. People want that, they want balance between the two. So, it also engages your employees to want to do a better job because they know that you care about them. It ignites that engagement level. It decreases absenteeism, it decreases presenteeism, and it can also help your bottom dollar with decreasing your work compensation spending. But the bottom line is that people that feel like their employer and their company care about them are going to be more likely to stay, be top performers, put out the best quality work, not leave, and not get hurt. And those are the people you want working for you. We know that. All right. So we can't talk about health care. We can't talk about spending and healthy work environments without talking about some of the things that we spend our money on. So we're going to look at three examples of major employee health risks that impact the bottom line. The first one is smoking. So smokers miss more work than non-smokers. This is a fact. The statistics are there. You're gonna spend more money if your employee is a smoker because it leads to chronic illnesses. Now those of you that vape in the audience, you're not getting away with anything, right? So this is just as unhealthy as smoking is. We just haven't had it around long enough to notice the side effects. But what we do see in the emergency department is a phenomenon called um, popcorn lump around the lungs and the CT scanners. And this is ingesting this plastic. And once it's around long enough, there will be studies that show that this is just as bad for you as cigarette smoking is. We didn't put kids in car seats, and I never, you know, never wore a seatbelt until it was a law, to be quite honest with you. So this is one of those things that we can control. One of the um, services that we provide for smoking sensation is one-on-one -on -one coaching, group counseling, uh, guidance from a physician or nurse practitioner on medication uh, to use for smoking sensation. This can affect your bottom line. Obesity. Unfortunately, we all know that obesity plays a large part in our healthcare costs. The biggest thing that I can talk about with obesity is the fact that the bigger you are around your belly button, the earlier you're gonna die. That's it. The facts are the facts. Right here, measure your circumference around. It is tied to mortality in a statistically significant way that is above all medical data. Obesity matters because it's the precursor for high blood pressure, the precursor for cardiac disease, the precursor for back pain, joint pain, needing knee replacements. Obesity is one of those things that you can tackle in your workplace and really lead better, help your people lead better lives. Diabetes, huge spending on diabetes. A diabetic employee is gonna uh, cost the company about $13,000 compared to $2,500 of a non-diabetic patient. This is something we can help with. We have diabetic counselors, we have nutritionists, 
we have health coaching, um, we can make an impact on this bottom line for diabetes. Workplace stress, okay, sickness, $300 billion is spent on this. We talked about stress. It's not healthy. The science and research out there shows from the American Heart Association that stress is actually tied to releasing a, a, meds or a, a, a cortisol in your bloodstream. And cortisol is so bad for your arteries, it actually quenches them down. And you can have a heart attack from stress. It's real. So I think this is important to know. So this came from the Harvard uh, Business Journal. And I love this because they're talking about direct and indirect medical costs. And so if you look at the direct medical costs of your employees, you've got the top part, which is really only 24% of those medical costs is going to the doctor, needing surgery, and your pharmacy needs, right? But if you look at the bottom part, this is where the real spending comes in. It's like this whole, you know, iceberg concept. So you've got long-term disability, short-term disability, absenteeism, which is really where a lot of the research has been. We've talked about, oh, unhealthy leads to absenteeism, and that's just a big driver for expenditures in your workplace. Uh, look at presenteeism. And presenteeism is this really new concept that's coming into the workplace, and there's tons of research about it. Presenteeism is the concept of people that are coming to work, but because of illness, not feeling good, depression, stress, they're really not functioning. These are the people that you see going to get coffee for the 14th time, or they're hanging out of the water uh, machine, right? Or they're on the phone making a doctor's appointment for their mother, or they're doing all the things that they should be doing except for work, right? So that's presenteeism, and that's expensive. That's real expensive. So I don't want to dwell on this, but it's such a fascinating bit of research. And like I said, I have a passion for wellness. You know, I've got a whole bedside table full of research articles and books and podcasts, and I can just nerd out with anybody about wellness in the workplace. But I think this concept bears noticing. So there's four different types of presenteeism that you could address in your workplace. So the first one is personal issues. So this is the employee that has family problems, maybe has relationship problems, um, substance abuse, they're hungover from the day before, or they're on the phone dealing with um, you know, the spouse that's a jerk and didn't want to pick up the kid. That's the people that are not doing work when they're at work because they're dealing with these issues. Then you have the business issue people. These are the people that because of job design, work relationships, trust with the people that they work with, or even job security, that they're not functioning for the way they should in the job. The third part of presenteeism is the physical aspect. So these are the people that have chronic conditions or a major illness that are on the phone, making phone calls, making appointments, um, you know, taking care of maybe a family member that is sick, making appointments for them. Those are the people doing those types of things and not working. And then the last is the psychological health issue. So this is the biggest problem, and this is really the one um, that is growing in our city. Another cross for work is work-related injuries. So you've got your direct costs of an injury and you've got your indirect costs of retraining somebody, you've got your lost time with that worker, lost time with the supervisor. It's expensive when people get injured at work. All of this is encompassed into workplace wellness. All of this impacts the bottom line. So we've talked a lot about the problems and I can tell you guys are like, oh my gosh, Michelle, this is really depressing. So your energy is being drained from your body. I can sense it. Let's talk a little bit about solutions because there are some ideas out there that we're doing that are really making an impact in companies. So I like to think of our service line as three chapters. The first chapter is our occupational medicine clinic. We have two clinics, one in Riverside and one on the hospital campus. The hospital campus one is undergoing a transformation from three treatment rooms to 12 treatment rooms. So that's really exciting for us right now. And their service line is really working hard at treating the injured worker and getting them back to work as quickly as they can, preventing re-injury or preventing injury that occurred, you know, from occurring from the beginning. So some of the services that they provide that may be really helpful for you is pre-employment physicals. And physicals are important because it gives you insight into what's happened to this employee prior to you. So surgeries they've had in the past, um, any type of uh, previous injuries, this is all going to come out and be documented within the physical. You can have annual exams. You have DOT exams that we do. We also have agility testing. This is really important. I think that every company should do agility testing. If they have an employee that does something physical, whether that's 
loading 25 pounds of parking material in and out of their vehicle all day long, or moving 50 pounds from their waist to their shoulder. So we bring them in, and if you don't have an analysis of exactly what they're doing, we can go to your job site, and we look and we see, what is this person gonna be required to do? How many times are they gonna be required to do it? We bring them in, we write that job description, and then we test them, and we make sure that they are able to perform the job at the job standards, and we give that report back to you. They're able to perform, they're not able to perform. That's important information to have before you hire somebody. <coughs> Additionally, we do ergonomic evaluations, respiratory testing, silica testing, which is really one of the up and coming changes that's coming. Audiograms, spirometry, we also do on-site services. Next week, we're gonna be at one of the school districts doing 125 physicals for uh, the bus transportation. We'll go to you, we'll do this at your site. If that's more convenient for you, we can make it happen. We do laboratory testing, vision testing, EKGs, cardiac stress tests. This is important information to have for firemen, policemen, who are running after bad guys or saving me from a burning building. It's important that they can do that and they're physically capable. Additionally, TB testing, flu shots, and vaccinations. The other part of the service line for Workers' Comp Clinic is the injured worker. So we have a really robust rehab program with physical and occupational therapists there on site. We do dry needling, we have x-ray. One of the things that we pride ourselves on is getting you into a orthopedic um, and for an eye um, exam or for an MRI um, within the same day or the next day. And that's one of the things that really makes us different because we have the backing of our hospital and that's a great system. So I love the fact that you talk so great about our hospital because this is a gem of a hospital. I don't know if you know how great North Kansas City Hospital is and what a nugget of gold that we have in North Kansas City. We recently in this last year um, ascertained what's called magnet status. And so this is a rigorous application. We put ourselves through this misery um, and we obtain magnet status. The only other hospital in the Kansas City area that has it is uh, KU on the Kansas side and the downtown St. Luke's Hospital. Only 8% of the hospitals in the world have this accreditation. I mean, we, you have to look at mortality, the um, scores of your patients for satisfaction, your turnover rate for your nurses. Good nurses stay at good hospitals. We are phenomenal at what we do. And so this service line, if you do have an injury of a worker and they need to come to the emergency department, this is like smooth as butter. I don't know if anybody's ever had this experience, but somebody comes into the emergency department, they present, and they were injured. We say, well, did this happen at work? And if it did, we pull up the protocol for that company. So if you haven't already created a protocol, it's like carrying an umbrella with you. It doesn't rain if you need it, but if you don't have it, then it's gonna rain. So call us and tell us who your clinic follow-up would be, if you have limitations in light duty, when people come back to work, um, whether or not you want mandatory or non-mandatory drug testing when there is an accident that occurs. This is great information for us to have. And it also gives us contact information. Because when somebody comes in and they've had an accident and they're in the emergency department, we automatically pull that employer information sheet, we put a green bracelet on that person, we put a green tracker star on that person, we fill the prescriptions for them before they leave because we know it's a pain for you to figure out what pharmacy that is covered for your work comp and all that. So we just do it right there. Make it easy on you. We call you, we tell you there's been an injury, we update you. It is a smooth and seamless process. So if you take it away from this, let us know what you need and we will make sure we've got the protocol. Yeah. So how do we go about doing that? You are just gonna talk to me right afterwards. I will just slip you a card and I've got some team members here that can make that happen. Perfect. So our after hours care is phenomenal. We also do drug testing. So I really think of drug testing as a prevention measure for really keeping drug users out of your um, company and then also stopping it from happening. So there's three ways that you can do drug and alcohol testing. If it's during clinic hours, you can go to either of our clinics and do drug testing there. If it's after hours, they can go to the emergency department and to the laboratory at the hospital 24 seven and have drug testing there. Or we will also go on site and do drug testing on your campus wherever you are. So if there's been an accident that they don't need emergency evaluation, but you're kind of like, oh, we better check this, right? Because this is a reasonable suspicion or this is post-accident, you have every right to do drug and alcohol testing on that employee. So we'll come to you, you come to us, or go to the clinic. 
the drug and alcohol testing that we do most often is either that pre-employment, that's kind of important information to know if somebody's using drugs. And I will tell you, it's shocking, but the North Kansas City Hospital recently did a community uh, health needs assessment. And one of the uh, things that shook out in our needs assessment is that we have an opioid crisis in Clay and Black counties. You know, the America is only 5% of the population, but 99% of the hydrocodone is consumed in America. We have issues, and we have issues here in our own population. And so knowing whether or not somebody is using drugs prior to employing them or while employing them, um, is really, really beneficial, and I would invite anybody to make sure they're doing this. So, last one, not yet. Yeah. Right, so it's really up to, do, up to you what you want to do for your drug testing. There's different panels. There's a five panel, six panel, all the way up to a 12 panel. So it's what drugs do you want to test? Do you want to test down to the bottom? Or is, you know, if you're going to let that go, that's a policy that you would write in your company on how to deal with that. So, yes. We're not allowing it at our hospital because there's still this whole federal thing. You know, that's kind of a big deal. So, yeah. Okay? All right. Good question. All right. The last piece I want to talk about is our wellness services. This just makes my heart beat. This is where we can really have an impact on what we're doing. Our wellness services are really um, across the board. We have kind of an all the cart menu, and then we also have like program strategies um, and groups. And so I'm just gonna kind of talk through some of the different things that we do, and really how it happens, what we do to make it happen in your company, I'll talk about later. So first and foremost, you're assigned a nurse wellness navigator to your company. This is the heartbeat of your program. This is the person that can connect you with physicians, nurses, um, any type of healthcare questions that they have. This is the person that's gonna organize your data. This is the person that's gonna help set goals and facilitate your needs. We do biometric screenings. We've had great, great impact with just simple blood pressure screenings. Doing lunch and learns, teaching people about their blood pressure and how they can control it, and then coming back and just doing stops in and little sessions, doing challenges, competition. Everybody loves a competition, right? Blood pressure. We also do cholesterol and diabetes screenings. We have nutrition counselors. We do education on absolutely everything. We have something called the Speakers Bureau, and we offer four free um, events where we will come to your employee uh, company and teach whatever it is you really want. Stroke, high blood pressure, we got a great talk about the science of happiness, um, leadership classes, communication classes, crucial conversations, um, you name it, and we've got people. That's the great thing about our program is we have the backing of physicians, nurse practitioners, nutritionists, physical therapists, fitness instructors, pharmacists. We have every single person you can name that's an expert in this field. So we offer education, nutrition counselors, ergonomic risk assessments within the workplace, massage, personal training, medication management. So I talked about it being two different ways. So we have an all heart method where if there's just a couple of things you want to do, looking at your spending for your company, you know smoking sensation is a big deal. You want to make an impact with it that, that year. We would come in, we would assess that. We would put in a whole entire campaign just around smoking sensation. That's simple, it's cut and dry, easy to manage. You don't need a portal or any sort of electronic management device. We also offer this full spectrum, which is a website or a portal that is through an app on your phone that manages the whole entire wellness program with the use of your navigator, that you set up incentive structures, points, um, you can do university classes. It's really dependent on what you are interested in doing. So, the difference between us and others. We have the backing of a qualified professionals and a whole entire hospital of experts. We have a customizable program that is available to you 24-7. It's branded. Your portal would be branded for your company. We have a balance between tech and touch that we think is really important. Because you want a person that your people can call for health coaching, for information, but you also want it to be accessible and something that they can just check in on their phone and do on a daily basis and is part of what they do. The other piece that's really welcomed by many small and medium-sized businesses is the portal is transferable with your company. So if you change insurance and so you're self-insured or your Cigna to Blue Cross, our portal and our information is stored and it's yours. So we move from insurance company to insurance company with you. So it's yours, you can track and trend your data. I think that 
that's really important. And then we also are very uh, flexible and integrate with all of your systems, your EAP, your dental, your vision. So the first thing we would do if we came, you're interested in doing something with wellness, we dig in. The most important part about painting your house is the scraping, the caulking, the taping, the getting everything prepared. And that's what a wellness program really is. You have to find out what's the culture at that company. What do they need? What are their goals? What is the leadership thing? What's the uh, mix of their um, employees, gender, race? Culture matters. I mean, one of my favorite companies to work with, and they're actually here in North Kansas City. I do a flu shot clinic with them every year. And when I went the first time, it was so funny because everybody was kind of like jogging in between, like coming down and getting their flu shot. And I'm like, hey, you guys, have you booked me for an hour? I'm here, da 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 And the supervisor laughed and he said, our hustle is our muscle. And I was like, oh, damn, I love that. Yes, I mean, you sense the culture of we hustle and that's what we do different and we do it better and they're making pallets. This isn't even that exciting at work, but they were doing a phenomenal job and the energy of high-fiving each other and somebody's wife came up with a kid and all cover you and just the real integration um, there just really shows me that it's possible. So coming in, interpreting your data, looking at where your spending is, looking at what your needs are. That's the first step. Then we strategize. We use marketing, we engage your employees, and then we measure, measure, measure. That's the most important thing. You have to be able to tell the story about what you're doing and the impact that you're making. So, any questions about anything I've said? I've said a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of great programs. Is it is it applicable or scalable to like to a small business of let's say five employees? Yes, we love small employees, right? We love these small groups because that's really where um, we can make the magic happen. Because what makes us different is we're so personable. We're not HR with a shiny flyer and a Fitbit. I mean, this is us coming in. I don't mean that HR, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, this is real. This is us contacting you, one of our nurses sitting down and saying, what do you guys want to do? What does awesome and healthy look like here? How do we make this happen? It's creating that culture within you guys. We've got valid assessment tools, wellness. We look and see what your needs are, what your strengths are. So yeah, we love small businesses because that's that's the cool thing. That's how you can see it, really personal. Anything else? Drug testing, somebody wanted a card or, oh no, ED, I'll give you a card. Thank you so much for your time, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. It's always amazing the vast amount of resources that are in North Kansas City. I urge you guys, when you're when you're needing any kind of services or anything for your business, look to North Kansas City first because there's probably a great business here that's taking care of it. And sitting in the middle of your table uh, is a directory. Utilize it. Thank North Kansas City first and support the local businesses. Speaking of which, Rich, I think you've got a few announcements. Thank you again. Yeah. It was right on target for, I think, most of our audience here today. Thank you. Good. Before I go on, I want to circle back to uh, earlier this month. We had a very successful uh, Mickey Finn Scholarship Golf Classic golf event. And I just want to thank again the presenting sponsor, which was Mid America Contractors and also other major sponsors for Ingredient and Consolidated Communications and North Kansas City Hospital. So thank you for that. And many others helped us volunteers or for adult sponsorships and roles like that. I'd like to give you a chance.